10 biggest travel mistakes. Creating too much of an agenda instead of just going with the flow. So there are pros and cons with both, obviously. If you have an agenda and a plan, that's a good thing for sure. But if you have too much of a plan, that means that anything that kind of gets thrown your way on your travels, you no longer can just kind of stop what you're doing and go with that. You can't just take a new route because you've already got commitments in place to do certain things that you've set up for the day which like I said is a good thing, but it kind of takes away new opportunities that you have. And honestly, going with the flow is a huge part of travel. So you kind of need to find that balance between having too much on your plate and having too much, let's just go with the flow. Plan out a few days of your trip and then leave another few days open for whatever else you want to do. For some things that you may have missed, the last few days of your trip free are great ways to catch up on those things not being mindful of your surroundings. When traveling, you'll find yourself being extremely present in the moment, and you may not be as mindful as to who and what's around you and what's going on. We've been in scenarios in the past where, at the time, we're being a bit too noisy, a bit too boisterous, or maybe some people are even swearing. If there's families, if there's kids, um, you gotta know. And although traveling is a lot of fun, and you're real in the moment, whether you're about to scream and do a cliff jump or something, if there's little kids around, you, got, you can't use bad language, and if there's families Families around that are trying to have you know their own peace and quiet you got to be mindful of that be a bit more aware of your surroundings and you'll be a bit more respectful fighting for the cheapest price when you probably shouldn't so when you find yourself traveling in other countries a lot of countries don't have as much as you and one thing you notice around especially touristy locations there's places things to buy things to see and they're always trying to sell you at a bit of a higher price you've got to remember though even though part of the game is to barter and find the best price don't always try to lowball them completely it's not always good to find the cheapest price think about who you're bartering with and choose how much you want to spend it's great playing the game of bartering and getting the lowest price but you don't always have to just think about it next time you're buying a little trinket on the side of the road for your mom Packing too much. What is this? <laughs> oh no. So Josh, how long are we staying for in this hotel? One day. Deep bag. Are you a wardrobe queen or? <laughs> or too little. Really the biggest key for you to know is how long you're going and where you're going to. What are the climates like? What's the weather gonna be like? So hopefully you've got the weather app on your phone and you've checked for the duration of your stay at place X what the weather's gonna be like so you can pack accordingly. I think the biggest thing that people do is overpack. Personally, and actually, you know what, for the rest of the guys too, yeah, I'm looking at you. Generally, we overpack, but we're getting to the point now where it's not really as much of an issue because we've done this a few times. The other thing, if you underpack, it's not so bad because you can at least buy something else that you need there. I'm gonna go shopping for Parker because we went for a two month road trip and Parker only packed two t-shirts. Overpacking usually leads to leaving stuff behind or just deciding to throw this out because you've got to make space. You don't need all the luxuries that you have at home, you know? Leave a couple things behind and just improvise while you're there. It's not a problem, you'll be fine, trust yourself, and don't overpack. I bought you a gift. You bought me a shirt, I need shirts. Thank you. <laughs> Looking out for you. Not respecting the cultural history of your surroundings. For example, we were in Thailand a while back, just wanted to film everything that we were doing, but we didn't think so much as to the effect of why we were filming or what we were filming in these different specific locations. I mean, for example, if you're on some sort of sacred monument or something that has you know a lot of historical value, you have to be specific with what you're doing there. Are you telling jokes? Are you running around? Are you doing backflips on things? This is all stuff that, I mean, the guys and I, we're definitely more mindful of it now, but at the time it's just gonna, oh, we didn't really see anything wrong doing. We're not harming anyone, but looking back on it, you definitely need to think first and uh, you know ask anyone who's around to see what is the cultural significance of what's gone on here and how can I be mindful of that and not do anything that could potentially affect someone in a negative way. Losing money through ATMs and currency exchanges. So a big part about going to another country is you are going to be using their foreign funds which you don't normally have. So it's a good thing to remember where are you going to exchange your cash 
to get it into the nationals funds. One place I don't recommend it is airports. It's okay to do it back home if you have a big bank or something that will change it for you, but look up online and look at the rates and look at different places and currency exchanges they do in your own hometown. Two things you can do, exchange the money back home or find a good place to do it when you get inside the country. Forgetting to negotiate the price beforehand. For us, this was most prevalent in cabs and sometimes in meals. If you just hop in a cab and say, hey, take me to the airport. I already took a cab from the airport to here and it was only 25 bucks. Yeah, just take me to the airport. You're expecting 25, now they charge you 60, 50, whatever. It's gonna really bother you. It bothered us and it's happened to us before and there's nothing that you can do about it because you haven't discussed anything. You haven't come up with a price. You haven't agreed on anything. It's as easy as just saying, hey, can you run the meter? Or B, let's decide on a price so that we're both uh, in agreement before this transaction takes place. Just make sure you clear the price before you do the activity, before you complete whatever is going on, and that way there's nobody that's gonna be like, crap, how did I get myself in this situation, or wow, what a waste of money. All you gotta do is confirm the price beforehand, and it's very important. It will save you. Always taking the biggest bargain. Sometimes the biggest bargain is not the best answer. The guys and I have failed at this many a times. Um, it really comes down to choosing and figuring out what is the best decision and the best spend of your money versus waste of your time or just overall experience. Especially when you're gonna travel for a while, we always like taking the cheaper options, you know, the cheapest hostels or, you know, the long bus rides. But sometimes it's definitely a lot more valuable to just pay the extra hundred bucks and do a quick flight versus spending an entire day on a stinky bus and then waking up the next morning in your in new environment and being exhausted and depleted of energy and not having enough zest to go do what you want to do. Think before you just go straight for the cheapest option. Take everything into account, not just the price. You got to think about the comfort, the convenience, the quality. These are all really, really important. And although trying to cut your amount of money that you spend down, it's important, sometimes it's worth just splurging a little bit. Not researching reviews of restaurants and accommodations. Okay, so there's this one time I booked a hotel and I was in charge of it for my group. And I just listened to one person I met sitting at a bar and he just said, you gotta go to this place when I was in Panama, actually, was the country I was in. Anyways, so we moved to this place and it looked good on paper. We didn't really look into it at all and there was everything wrong with it. Cockroaches, none of beds to stay, didn't speak a word of my own language, which isn't the worst thing, but I just had no way to communicate with them. They were just kind of shysty and what I'm trying to say is it was the worst experience I ever had and it looked bad upon me because I was in charge of making sure everyone had a good place to, uh, to stay that night. So, I mean, I got help for it, but I learned my lesson. Always use an app such as like Hostel World, use TripAdvisor, anything you can to find out the place you're staying at, how well it's rated. Because in this day and age, with everybody traveling, lots of people are leaving wealth of information and good travel reviews, so you can be sure if you do the research that you won't end up in a situation like I did. Not being present. As vloggers, it's incredibly difficult to do this. I mean, a lot of the time we sometimes miss out on an experience because we're filming everything so much. We arrive at a new location and the first thing we're doing is pulling out the camera, the tripod, the glide cam, you know, okay, what are the angles we're gonna shoot? Uh, you know, oh, what kind of selfies can we take here? It sounds narcissistic, but at the same time, doing this as a job, we've, in a sort of a sad way, we, we do lose a bit of the experience, so, this I'd say is one of the biggest mistakes you can make while traveling is trying to document your experience and although documenting it is a lot of fun, you, know, you end up being able to have pictures and videos of your time abroad uh, that'll last forever, it's really important to just put the camera down and be present with your surroundings and just take in everything that your environment has to offer you. Sometimes that's just sitting and looking in one direction and letting your mind flow freely or um, experiencing it with the people around you. There's so many times that we've traveled where we just all put our devices down and experience it alone or together. It's just like this overwhelming rush of calmness, of peacefulness. You become present in the moment. You really embrace your surroundings and then pick up the pace, pick up the camera, 
and get back to work. I'd say that's the, probably the biggest travel mistake you can ever make is to do an entire trip focused on just trying to take pictures and document and share Instagram pictures. You don't end up experiencing anything in the moment. So take our pieces of advice, please. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Feel free to share it and subscribe. Also, this is a really fun opportunity for you to leave some comments with some of your biggest lessons learned from travel mistakes. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of different variety from you guys, we would love to hear about it. The ones that we just talked about, these are kind of our own personal ones, but I know there must be an assortment of other ones and you guys probably have some really great stories for us. Leave them below, we'll get back to you. We wanna hear about it, thanks. Biggest travel mistakes. Cut. <laughs> <laughs>